I am not just uh, mowing the lawn, I'm actually listening to an audiobook. And in this video, I am going to tell you five reasons why you should listen to an audiobook. Or actually, it's five books that I can highly recommend in audio. I'm Stella, and this is my channel, 30 Books. You know, you know, you know, audio books are great for when you need to be doing something else and you want to take your mind off what you're doing. Or maybe you're doing a hard job like mowing a lawn and listening to an audio book is kind of a way of making a look a little bit more pleasurable. But audio books are really fantastic in and of themselves. For a start, you know, there's probably, you know, there's always reasons, you know, there's reasons why some people cannot read print. Maybe they're blind or have low vision, maybe they're illiterate, maybe they can't physically hold a book. You know, let's be realistic. Life is full of things that we don't want to do and sometimes listening to an audio book while you're doing that is great, but then sometimes just kicking back and relaxing and listening to an audiobook is a good thing. So uh, let's talk about the five books that I have been listening to. Oof, that is hot work. I thought I'd better sit down in a bit of shade here, right next to the backyard fence. So the five reasons why you should listen to audiobooks. In fact, it's just five audiobooks that I have listened to recently. Reason number one for listening to an audiobook is My Sister the Serial Killer by Oyonkin Braithwaite. She's a Nigerian writer and um, this book was narrated by a Nigerian theatre uh, actor or actress and uh, film star, Waruchi Opia. Now, as the title gives it away, it is, it's, it's about somebody's sister, Korode, who is the eldest sister and her younger sister, Ayula, who, and Korode is a nurse and as the older Nigerian sister, she has been brought up to look after her younger sister. Now her younger sister is also very beautiful and a little bit flighty and she doesn't seem to realise the impact that um, her murdering her boyfriend is happening on Corriday because Corriday is expected by Aula to come and help her clean up the mess, i.e. move the body. And so the story is about the third murder. Corriday knows that she should go to the police about Aula, but there is something that is stopping her because she is so responsible for looking out for her. This is a very darkly funny book and the reason that I think it's I just got so much more out of it um, with an audio book is because it, it's Nigerian and it's read by a Nigerian writer and the language is beautiful and the accent is beautiful and the insights and there's kind of there's some drama going on and it and it's very very funny so that is my sister the serial killer by e oyinkan braithwaite <laughs> reason why you should be listening to audiobooks is The Yield by Tara June Winch. Now, what so much has been said about this book, it is the Stella uh, Miles Franklin winner. I don't have a lot more to add to, you know, how fantastic this book is. It's the story of um, Augustine who goes home. She's been away for about a decade because her grandfather is dying or has died. So she goes home for her grandfather's funeral. And she is compelled to help her family keep the land on, um, uh, on, on which they kind of were living and where she's been, where she was brought up. 
So it also goes through two timelines. So you've got Augustine's timeline and then we go back to about 19, I think it's 1939 for her grandfather's um, story. It is narrated by Australian actor uh, Tony Briggs and his voice is absolutely fantastic and I think it just added a real richness and texture and I, for me personally, I thought this book was fantastic as an audio book. My number three reason for listening to an audio book is A Room Made of Leaves by Kate Grenville, Grenville the rather fabulous Kate Grenville. It's narrated by an English actor, so this is an Australian book, but it's about Elizabeth McCarthy, who was at the time a young English girl. So, and it's narrated by English actor Valerie Bader. I think of Bader, I think I've got that right. So Elizabeth McCarthy wore MacArthur, Elizabeth MacArthur was the wife of John MacArthur, who is said to have created the Australian wool and sheep industry. I mean, his image is on one of our coins, or is it a dollar? It used to be the two dollar thing. Even though Elizabeth MacArthur uh, is a, was a real person, she's fictionalised this story and she is positing the question is, is, well, is our history made up of false stories, especially this one? Because you know, I think it's becoming more, through her diaries that Elizabeth MacArthur kept, it's becoming more evident that she, she was actually fundamental in establishing the wool and sheep industry in Australia, uh, which is absolutely huge. And just another reason of the way that uh, women have been erased from history. So through fictionalising it, we've also got another way of looking at history, but a story in its own right as well. And I love the audio in this because you get the sense like she's a young girl when she first marries this kind of tyrant and a bully. And she has been in England and she comes over here and, and she is able to see Australia for what it is at that moment, that it is a different country, that it is not England, and that there is another way of doing things. So that is A Room Made of Leaves by Kate Grim Grimble. My number four reason for listening to audio books is the Rip by Mark Brandy. Now, I had a chat with Mark Brandy not that long ago, at the end of last year, I think in November, in Bad Sydney. So this particular book was narrated by Tamara Shelton. Now, this book is about two, well, it's really essentially about one young woman, uh, uh, but and, and it's in first person, which is interesting because I do think that audio really lends itself to the first person narration. Um, so it's about a young woman who is homeless and something terrible is about to happen. She has a friendly, and it's about also her male friend. They're very good friends. They learn to rely on each other and in enters someone who can offer them a home, but it's a very dangerous ground, or should I say dangerous water, because they're about to get caught in the rip. This is a crime thriller, but it's also a really interesting way of looking at vulnerable people, and I think the narration really lent itself to that, because again, you're listen it's like you're listening to a young girl, that's whose voice that you can hear. I love this one. I thought it was a fantastic. And my number five reason for listening to an audio book or reading an audio book is There Was Still Love by Fable Parrot. Oh my gosh. Um, I am, as I said earlier, this, I was, 
I, this is the book I am still listening to it. But so, but I really wanted to talk about it. But at the same time, I'm processing it. It is set in 1980 in Melbourne and in Prague, and it's about two young people, Ludwig and Malika, who are cousins. I think they might be about eight to ten years of age. It's also about their grandmothers, who were sisters, and they're separated. It's about their grandparents as well. So you imagine and. Um, you imagine that you leave a country where you don't have freedom and you go to another country where you do have freedom that you might be happy and yes they are happy but throughout the book this is such a book of heartache about separation leaving a place that you love it's about being forgotten in the way that Czechoslovakia was really forgotten they were essentially handed over, the country was handed over to another country. They were kind of the, you know, treated as spare change or I I at the end of World War Two, like, yeah, you can have this country in order to end something that was going on. I don't know a lot about that kind of history, but this is what was beautiful about this book, that you, that you, it's through the grandparents talking, especially one of the grandfathers, Bill, that you learn so much about that type of history. So in Melbourne, Malika is very much first person and Ludwig is in the third person in Prague, very much through child's eyes. So you are getting uh, uh, what they're talking about, that what they're telling you is that as an adult, you can interpret what is really going on, which makes it really sad. At the same time, the title alone, there was still love. There was so much love in this book. It's so beautiful to, to see the love that these two grandparents, and also there is a mother who, and I don't want to give too much away, and there is so much love for these children. That they are loved in these really difficult circumstances, the grandparents manage to kind of bring this sense of the world and joy, and there are moments of real joy. This was narrated, this is narrated by Ngori Rice. So there are my five reasons that um, maybe you should go out and listen to an audio book got some more lawn mowing I need to do, I've got a lot of work to do and I will see you next time on 30 Books.